Welcome along, fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around, we're going to check out some of my favorite photos of the fantastic home of composer Jim Steinman. You're going to see some really cool snaps, some of which you may have never seen before. This is part one. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. This is a photo of the brilliant lyricist and composer Jim Steinman. You might not know his name, but you most certainly know his music. And that is because in 1973, he met this spectacular singer. That is Meatloaf. Jim single-handedly wrote every song on the legendary Bad Out of Hell album, and its sequel, Bad Out of Hell 2. When it came to the music and lyrics, Jim had a gothic and darkly atmospheric writing style, with words and sounds that have an emphasis on the sensory experience and the evocation of a mysterious or a haunting atmosphere, which was perfect for Meatloaf. You see, in the melodies of many of Jim's songs, Meatloaf demonstrated a vocal range spanning from a bass F2 to a soaring falsetto EB6, covering the entire spectrum in between. His vocal style aligned with that of a held in tenor, characterized by a commanding and dramatic tenor voice with a significant bodily resonance. Accompanied by his iconic barrel chest, his vocal prowess would undoubtedly have been admired by many in the realm of Wagnerian tenors. And then there comes upon Jim's collaboration with Bonnie Tyler. Tell the truth, how many times in your life were you driving alone in your car or doing something else, anything else, and you heard the song Total Eclipse of the Heart and you turned up the volume and sang along? You know that you sang every word of that song, that it's like it's deeply entwined within your DNA. That song and the music, all created by Jim Steinman, pumps through every vein in your body, doesn't it? I mean, let's be honest, shall we? If the world fell apart and there was no power to do anything, no electricity, no internet, no radio, nothing, I bet you can run that entire song second by second in your mind. You know it's true. And you're not alone. Jim Steinman did that. Jim Steinman gave that gift to you. He gave the gift of incredible music and lyrics to all of us. You see, Jim Steinman wasn't just a lyricist and songwriter. He was a masterful sound designer who skillfully crafted auditory experiences. Listening to his music is like entering a room that is dangerous and painted with deep and dark and warm hues that are reminiscent of a Victorian brothel. The floors are adorned with thick plush carpets that cradle your bare feet. And the antique furniture, towering walls, and wide windows overlooking luscious landscapes are covered with cascading drapes made of glistening silks, heavily textured felts, and blackened velvets. That's how so many people feel when they listen to Jim's music. And so this show you're watching holds a special place in my heart. You see, throughout my entire life, I have been a devoted fan of this musical genius. And years ago, I even reached out to him to express my gratitude for the incredible music that has brought immense joy to millions of lives. Now, with his passing, it saddens me that many people are unaware of his role as the lyricist and composer behind some of the most legendary pop music ever produced. His compositions delved into a profound emotional spectrum, intertwining themes of love and anger and frustration, desire, loss, and triumph. The intricate emotional tapestry that he wove created a tumultuous journey for the audience, leaving them both emotionally and physically drained as the final notes faded away. For those unacquainted with the remarkable career of Jim Steinman, I'll share intriguing details while you peruse accompanying images. Born on November 1st, 1947 in New York City, Jim Steinman was an esteemed American composer, lyricist, and record producer celebrated for his contributions to the music industry. Here's a concise overview of his journey. Steinman, a native of New York City, grew up in Hewlett, New York. 
His educational path included George W. Hewlett High School, followed by studies at Amherst College in Massachusetts. A passion for music ignited during his youth, leading to the creation of songs while in college and an initial collaboration with the musical theater group The Dream Engine. A pivotal partnership emerged with singer Meatloaf, starting with the groundbreaking album Bad Outta Hell. Steinman composed all the songs, featuring iconic tracks like Paradise by The Dashboard Light and Bad Outta Hell and, well, really, all of them are iconic. Venturing into his solo career, Steinman released albums like Bad For Good in 1981 that was originally intended as a follow-up to Bad Outta Hell. Collaborations extended to various artists, including Bonnie Tyler, for whom he wrote and produced the hit Total Eclipse of the Heart. Renowned for his grand and operatic style, Steinman frequently incorporated theatrical elements into his music. Expanding into musical theater, Steinman contributed lyrics and music to productions such as Dance of the Vampires and Whistle Down the Wind. In the latter stages of his career, Steinman remained active, engaging in diverse projects including collaborations with artists like Celine Dion. He also wrote songs that were performed by Barbra Streisand, Barry Manilow, and Air Supply. Jim Steinman's impact on the music industry, particularly in rock and theatrical genres, was profound. Sadly, Jim Steinman passed away on April 19, 2021, at the age of 73. His enduring influence, characterized by epic, bombastic sound and emotional intensity, remains a significant force in rock music and musical theater. And so that's just a brief overview that encapsulates the journey of Jim Steinman, a figure whose compositions will always be celebrated for their storytelling prowess and distinctive style. While this documentary of Jim's home doesn't center on Jim Steinman's musical contributions, I'd gladly produce one if there's interest. And so for now, let's venture into the living space of this extraordinary genius. Jim Steinman's residence is situated approximately one hour from Manhattan, nestled in the scenic town of Ridgefield within Fairfield County, Connecticut. Ridgefield had a population of 25,033 people as per the 2020 census. It has a rich history dating back to its establishment in 1709. And this is where he lived. The view from the road reveals a charming scene. Stone walls with lanterns adorn each side of the driveway. And notably, there are no security gates. A surprising feature considering his incredible fame. The external appearance of the residence, built in 1920 on one and a half acres, gives the impression of an expansive, white-toned country cottage. Jim purchased the house, located at 22 Ketchum Road, for $424,000 in 1993. And he subsequently collaborated with the renowned architect Rob Bramhall to transform it into a creative sanctuary. Jim invested over $6 million in the construction alone. It was originally listed for $5,555,569 on October 3rd, 2022. That unique number carries symbolic significance, representing new beginnings and a nod to Jim's pride as the class of 1969 at Amherst College. But unfortunately, nobody bought it at that price, and so it was later reduced to $4 million. $555,569 $555,569 on March 3rd, 2023. But nobody bought it for that price either. And so, it was further lowered to $3,950,000 on January 1st, 2024. As of the time of this recording, the house still has not sold. And so for potential buyers, a 20% down payment would amount to $790,000 with closing costs estimated at $158,000. Monthly payments over 30 years would be approximately $25,000. The sale proceeds will contribute to supporting Steinman's foundation and its projects. David Sonnenberg, Steinman's manager and executor of the estate, said the proceeds from the sale will be used to fund the new charity, Rockman Philharmonic, which will encourage people in music and theater. Mr. Sonnenberg said it's called Rockman because that's what Steinman means in German. He further said, we hope the buyer of the property collaborates with us because it would be an ideal place for an artist's residency. As you can see, the residence boasts two primary front entrances. The first, situated near the driveway, likely served as the original access point to the cottage. 
The second entrance is positioned at the opposite end within the recent east side addition, accessible through its own porch. Now let's explore the interior. Upon entering through the door, you step into the entry hall in a manner reminiscent of mythical storytelling structure, entering this house parallels an architectural journey. As you cross the threshold, you transition from the ordinary world into a magical realm, where the customary rules take on a different form. I mean, imagine yourself as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and she's stepping out of her black and white room, the normal world, the ordinary world, the world she has always known and opening the door to unveil the vibrant hues of Munchkinland. From this point forward, everything is set to change. As you step inside, the ambiance is characterized by hardwood flooring, dark wood crown molding, baseboards, and window trim. Unconventional lanterns adorn the walls, and the walls themselves are painted in a peculiar shade of blue. This isn't the type of blue that you could typically find on a swatch at the painting store. Jim Steinman termed it Obsidian Blue, a nod to Neverland City in the story of Peter Pan. The setting resembles gazing at the cosmos through the vast windows of Jim's spaceship. An antique chair and desk host a bat-shaped artwork display, alongside showcases of peculiar costumes. In the realm of folklore, mythology, and fairy tales, heroes often receive or earn special gifts, including transformative clothing like the Invisibility Cloak, along with unique weapons and tools for their heroic journeys. And so perhaps that is why that bat-shaped artwork and those peculiar costumes are there. At the far end of this extraordinary entrance, there are a couple of closets and a toilet. These serve a functional purpose but are also symbolic. Here is where you shed your exterior garments, symbolizing the transformation needed to venture into the innermost cave, a concept deeply rooted in mythic storytelling. It is here where guests remove their coats and gloves and scarves because they will not be needed from this point forward. Opening the door to the toilet reveals silver tiles, countertops, hardware, and unconventional lighting fixtures. A deep blue sink completes the ensemble, akin to stepping into Nikola Tesla's tower. Now that you're prepared, let's venture into the special world of Jim Steinman. Upon pivoting from the entry hall, you step into the grandeur of the great room. As evident, it exudes a maximalist and extravagant aesthetic, an entirely expected trait for fans of Jim Steinman. Guided by his famous quote, if you don't go over the top, you can't see what's on the other side. This residence belonged to a brilliant man, a musical Peter Pan who seemed to have embraced a perpetual adolescence of opulence. The majestic dimensions of this room span 25 feet in width and nearly 38 feet in length. Bathed in natural light pouring through expansive windows overlooking the backyard and side lawn, the room features wall-to-wall -wall hardwood floors. The walls are paneled, reminiscent of an English country estate. A deliberate choice, influenced by Jim's initial hesitation to purchase the home, because he thought it was too small. Stemming from his visit to Andrew Lloyd Webber's Sidmonton Court in Hampshire, in the UK. A touch of aviation history is incorporated into the ambiance with wall light fixtures crafted from aircraft parts. Robust beams support an intricate minstrel gallery adorned with gargoyles overseeing the space, while a pulpit-like bay extension graces the right. Now direct your gaze upward, and you can see the coffered ceiling. As you know, coffered ceilings are a classical architectural detail that showcase rectangular, square, or octagonal grids in sunken panels. And here in Jim's great room, the panels between the wood beams are adorned with deep blues, featuring celestial star-like lights and images of comets traversing the cosmos. Hanging from the ceiling are monumental, solid-cast bronze gothic lights, with a globe-shaped lantern between them, displaying exposed brass or another metal 
which is a captivating sight in this extraordinary space. Surveying below, you encounter unique artwork adorning the walls, the furniture, and even the floor. How does one assign a monetary value to pieces personally commissioned by a musical genius to grace his magnificent sanctuary? that potentially served as wellsprings of inspiration for his timeless songs. Interestingly, a significant portion of this eccentric artwork hails from Bayreuth, Germany, the residence of Steinman's operatic kindred spirit, Richard Wagner. Interestingly, while the architect and Steinman collaborated together during the construction process, Jim never laid eyes on the house until he was ready to move in. As you step inside the great room, your gaze is drawn beneath what appears to be an alien head, possibly once belonging to a witch doctor, an intriguing sight that echoes the essence of some of his classic lyrics. Right at the center, dominating the foreground, stands a colossal sculpture resembling the legendary Crystal of Knowledge that Superman hurled into the Arctic Circle snow, which gave rise to the Fortress of Solitude. Crafted by the German experimental artist and object builder Rob Freiberger, this impressive piece is part of his repertoire, which includes expansive steel sculptures, light installations, painting, and photography. Jim Steinman's introduction sparked a connection that blossomed into art acquisitions, commissions, and a lasting friendship. Some might question the appeal of acquiring such a sculpture, finding it possibly unconventional or even unattractive. However, for those who perceive the world through the lens of a computer simulation or share a fascination with the unconventional, this piece holds particular intrigue. In my live stream discussions, I've mentioned my experience with chromesthesia, also known as sound to color synesthesia. This phenomenon, where sounds evoke perceptions of color, shape, and movement, is something that I actively encounter in my daily life. I often describe it as resembling the Fortress of Solitude, coincidentally discovered during childhood when I was listening to songs from the Bad Out of Hell album. And so for individuals who have chromesthesia, music translates into a visual spectacle of colors in space, akin to the sculpture's reflective metallic surface. Jim Steinman's choice to acquire this artwork may very well be indicative of his own experience with sound to color synesthesia further highlighted by the assorted colors mirroring off its metallic exterior. Positioned on the far right side of the room, within the great room is Jim's Yamaha G3 Conservatory Grand Piano, a cherished instrument played during the creation of some of the most iconic songs in music history. This includes masterpieces like I'd Do Anything for Love, Total Eclipse of the Heart, and It's All Coming Back to Me Now. Adorning the piano are various works of art, among them a sculpture of Wagner, in an effort to safeguard Jim's legacy, the estate is in search of a new custodian who could recognize the transformative essence of his home and its artistic elements, all of which are encompassed in the cell. Entrusted with this responsibility are Jim's lifelong friends, ensuring that his lifelong bachelorhood and the associated property sale are handled with care. As you can see, aligned against the wall, and scattered throughout the great room are towering mixed-media steel and glass sconces. Positioned behind Jim's piano, one can observe meticulously crafted stained glass panels featuring designs that encompass symbolic imagery, possibly even including a coat of arms. And adjacent to the piano, there seems to be an antique Federal Empire love seat, likely dating back to around 1815, and most likely crafted in either New York City or Boston. This exquisite piece seems to be constructed of finely formed mahogany, culminating in hand artisan carved scrolled swan arms of remarkable proportions and scale. Toward the far end from the entry into the great room, a comfortable seating area unfolds, adorned with sofas and chairs. Notably present is a Victorian mahogany and upholstered sofa, featuring finely carved legs. Just picture yourself seated here on a hot summer night contemplating whether or not you should offer your throat to the wolf with the red roses. A vast blue carpet graces the floor beneath, adding to the inviting ambiance. A distinctive chair with wings on the back, aptly named Jim's Throne, commands attention. Commissioned by Steinman and crafted by Rob Freiberger, this unique piece was designed to make anyone seated in it 
appeared to have angel wings when leaning back. Jim, upon visiting the artist's workshop for the first time, expressed his reverence and uttered four profound words to the artist. Quote, this is holy work, end quote. While Jim initially proposed the idea and created the initial sketches of what he had in mind, he granted the artist complete creative freedom, even sending an email stating, quote, no matter what you do, I'll like it anyway, end quote. Freeberger invested approximately two months in cutting, welding, and bending the stainless steel wing throne, weighing around 330 pounds. Each phase of construction was meticulously documented through photographs that were shared with Steinman, who the artist felt sensed the power emanating from the iron. High above the fireplace can be seen another work of art by Rob Freeberger, entitled Let Go or Be Dragged. The majority of the art on display in the Great Room are those by Mr. Freeberger, as well as that by Rosalie, who was a German set designer, painter, and sculptor, Gabrielle Plossner, who was a German bronze artist, who is known for her tagline, Wagner in Bronze, reflecting her focus on creating bronze sculptures created by Wagner's operas. Also, there is artwork by Axel Luther, who is a German artist, painter, and sculptor, known for his extensive work with aluminum and tin foils. His artistic repertoire encompasses a diverse range of subjects, including animals, angels, Christ, dragons, and various mythical creatures. And there's also artwork by Joseph Wolf Grazzi, a multimedia artist based in New York City, who incorporates a range of elements in his work, from animal and human skulls to bones and taxidermic bats. The door to the left leads into Jim's bedroom, which I will be showcasing in another show. Some of the artwork in the Great Room include a pedestal-mounted head of Lucifer, a painting of a black heart against a red background, a minotaur in a rather unconventional pose above a, well, let's just say a well-fed lady. Some artworks, such as the minotaur, are displayed upon a late 19th century Italian walnut Renaissance revival credenza. There's also a sculpture resembling a wild boar which potentially inspired Jim's lyrics, In the land of the pig, the butcher is king. On the coffee table can be seen an aluminum or maybe a wired woven mixed metal sculpture that portrays a female Native American warrior, which kind of evokes elements of Don Quixote and Rocinante. And if so, then this design resonates with some of the characters in Jim's songs who are seemingly awkward, past their prime, but yet engage in heroic acts fueled by love and passion. And there's also a sculpture capturing the essence of a sexy female in bliss. Situated on the far right is a fireplace surrounded by what appears to be elegant black marble. On display in front of it is a steel work of art by Rob Freeberger, titled No Beginning, No End. It is three and a half feet by seven feet. On the northern end of the great room is a two-story high bay window which provides a commanding presence. This perspective captures the Great Room from the northwest angle, showcasing the seating area to the left, the antique credenza on the right, and a stately antique grandfather clock. This image offers a side view of the Great Room from the exterior of the house. Taken from the north, this photo reveals the entirety of the Great Room, showcasing more of Jim's art collection. Stained glass windows behind the piano and built-in shelves beside the seating area come into view. And here are some captivating photos of Jim in his Great Room. Now let's take a look at the floor plan. You can see a butler's pantry adds a practical touch, likely proving useful during entertaining occasions. In fact, Mr. Steinman frequently made use of the small kitchenette next to the great room, finding solace in his offerings of fresh fruit and cans of Progresso soup. His culinary inclinations lean towards hot sauces, sweet soda, and chewy candy. Within this space, Jim stored containers of gummy bears, 
sourced from the pick-and-mix selection at Dean and DeLuca that will replenish monthly. From this perspective, a glimpse of the minstrel gallery is visible. At this point, I want you to know that I understand that many people watching this cannot even imagine living in a space like that. Well, that is where design psychology kicks into high gear for creative people. You see, living in beautiful and creative environments is often considered important for creative individuals for several reasons. You see, beautiful environments engage the senses and provide a sensory-rich experience. This stimulation can lead to heightened creativity as the mind is inspired by visually appealing surroundings, interesting textures, and pleasant sounds. Creative individuals often draw inspiration from aesthetics, surroundings that are visually inspiring, whether through art, nature, or well-designed spaces that can trigger new ideas and perspectives. Beautiful environments tend to evoke positive emotions. Positive emotions, in turn, have been linked to enhanced creativity. Living in a place that brings joy and positivity can contribute to a more open and innovative mindset. A well-designed and aesthetically pleasing environment can contribute to a sense of calm and reduce stress. Minimizing stress and distractions allows creative individuals to focus more on their work and allows their ideas to flow freely. Creative spaces like this often encourage experimentation and risk-taking when individuals like Jim Steinman are surrounded by an environment that promotes exploration and creativity, they may feel more liberated to try new things and push the boundaries of their creative pursuits. Beauty and order in the environment can influence the individual's mindset. A well-organized and aesthetically pleasing space may help cultivate a mindset that values beauty and creativity, promoting a more inspired and imaginative approach to work. I talk about design psychology all the time, how your environment affects your attitude and your productivity and your creativity. You see, creative people often express themselves through their surroundings. Living in a space that reflects their personal style and identity can create a sense of authenticity and alignment, fostering a deeper connection to one's creative pursuits. Beautiful and creative environments can serve as hubs for collaboration and community. Interacting with other creative individuals in such spaces like this can lead to a cross-pollination of ideas and shared inspiration. As you likely know, creative work often requires extensive periods of focus and dedication. A supportive and beautiful environment contributes to overall well-being, ensuring that creative individuals have the physical and mental energy to sustain their creative endeavors. And it's not just the artwork and the furniture and the way the place is decorated. It's also the view from the windows. You see, natural settings, whether outdoors or incorporating natural elements indoors, have been shown to boost creativity. Nature has a way of inspiring fresh perspectives and fostering a sense of connection that could be beneficial for creative thinking. Ultimately, the relationship between creative individuals and their environment is deeply personal. While some may find inspiration in minimalist spaces, others may thrive in eclectic and vibrant surroundings. The key is to create an environment that aligns with the individual's unique preferences and fuels their creative spirit. And that is why what you are seeing is exactly what a musical genius like Jim Steinman wanted and needed. What about you? What sort of environment works best for your productivity and creativity? I understand there's a lot of people that might not like this space and how it's decorated. But if you were someone like Jim Steinman, wouldn't you find inspiration in every direction that you looked? Because he sure did. And as a big fan of Jim Steinman, I am thrilled that he was able to live in such an incredible environment and in the manner in which he needed to, to generate so much inspiration that cascaded down into his work. Jim commissioned this stunning staircase to ascend to the Minstrel Gallery, providing an elevated perspective of the Great Room.
From here, it's easy to envision the grandeur of this space, perfect for entertaining numerous guests and offering splendid views of the property through the upper windows. In one corner, a skeleton in mid-scream sits in a chair, overseeing the activities in the great room. And another enchanting view further captures the essence of this space. From this vantage point, observe the gargoyles peering down upon the piano, the seating area, and the art-filled scene below. Jim Steinman, the renowned musician and composer, lived a life that echoed a Peter Pan-style creative spirit, embracing the essence of a perpetual dreamer and genius. With considerable wealth, he crafted an environment that reflected his creative vision and allowed him to live joyfully while daydreaming, imagining, and creating iconic songs. Steinman's genius was evident in his ability to compose music that transcended conventional boundaries. His compositions were theatrical, grandiose, and emotionally charged, contributing to his reputation as a creative force in the music industry. Having achieved significant success and recognition for his work, Steinman enjoyed a life of affluence. This wealth allowed him to create a beautiful and serene environment tailored to his artistic sensibilities. His home in Ridgefield, Connecticut, stood as a testament to his taste and style, reflecting both opulence and artistic inspiration. Steinman's residence became a sanctuary where he could immerse himself in a world of creativity. The property featured unique spaces and design elements that mirrored his personality and artistic flair. The blend of grandeur and tranquility provided the ideal backdrop for his imaginative pursuits. Steinman embraced life with joy, finding inspiration in the simple pleasures and the fantastical. His ability to infuse joy into his work and surroundings was evident, creating an atmosphere that fueled his creativity. The serene environment and Steinman's Peter Pan style approach allowed him the luxury of daydreaming and letting his imagination run wild. It was within this creative space that he could conceive and refine the fantastic and iconic songs that became synonymous with his name. His compositions were characterized by epic narratives, powerful emotions, and theatrical arrangements. Songs like Total Eclipse of the Heart, I Do Anything for Love, and others showcased his ability to craft timeless anthems. In essence, Jim Steinman's life was a manifestation of a creative genius living in a world of his own making. His wealth allowed him the freedom to curate an environment that fueled his creativity, and his music continues to resonate as a testament to the joy imagination, and romance that defined his artistic journey. And so this concludes part one of this series on Jim Steinman's incredible Connecticut home. Part two will showcase the hallway, Jim's fabulous bedroom including much of his artwork, his bathroom and closets, and the oval-shaped ring room that leads directly to the original cottage that Jim purchased before adding this wing to the house. So, what do you think of Jim Steinman's Connecticut home? If you were rolling in dough, would you live in a place like that? You know I would. And if you would live in a place like that, would you keep it as it is and honor Jim Steinman's memory and decor, or would you change it to your own liking? By the way, I don't know who took some of the photos that I've shown in this show, so if you do, will you kindly let me know so I can respectfully give them the credit they deserve? By the way, if the current owners would like to invite me to this fabulous home for a private tour, please reach out and do so. I will even bring the tea and scones. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because there will be more shows like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of this channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, many geniuses throughout history chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, 
I wish you safe travels on all your journeys. <laughs>